Hi, good evening to everyone. My name is Nethila and I'm the founder and CEO of Masspreneurs Business Academy for Kids and Teens. So, welcome to the monthly LinkedIn Live where we bring a random entrepreneur or a very ex- experienced person in business onto the show and we interview them to learn about their past, their childhood and how they became successful. So, if you're new here and you want to see previous interviews, you can go to our YouTube channel Cinema Chat with Nethila and you can look at our previous videos where we have interviewed countless other entrepreneurs and CEOs and successful people. So, today our special guest is Mr. Dilupa Patirana. He is the CEO of Barista Sri Lanka Private Limited and uh, he has a lot to share with us. And he's also very experienced and deep into the marketing side. So he has a lot of experience there. He believes a lot in marketing. So we have a lot to learn from this person. Hi, good Hi. evening Mr. Dilupa. Good evening, good evening. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you. It's an honor to have you because I am a regular customer at Barista. You know, I, I love oh, my coffee. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Everybody likes, seems to be. <laughs> so, I have a lot of questions because I have a lot to learn from you today. So, okay. Let's try. first question I want to ask is about your childhood, you know, your family. What was childhood like for you? Well, uh, it was, uh, you know, an average childhood. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a very dramatic, you know, uh, story to be told. My mom and my dad was, uh, father was, uh, they were just uh, middle class, hardworking uh, and saving kind of family we had. And I had my sister, elder to me. I was the youngest. My mom and dad, both, they, they were both uh, working. Uh, on on this uh, small uh, hotel, I would say, uh, in Colombo. And uh, I, I, I remember my father used to say, like, I was then I am now also, uh, you know, managing <laughs> seriously. It was a teka day for my father. Uh, it was irony of fate, but you know, it was a small uh, household where my both parents really understood uh, the value of education. So the capital uh, that uh, I gained was the knowledge that uh, that they really wanted me to, you know, pursue. And uh, from there, uh, I schooled at uh, a village college. Like I am, I lived in Kalania. So it was first eleven years at uh, Kalania Sri Dharma Loka College. Uh, up to my O levels, and then for A levels, I moved to Ananda, and uh, from there I got through to the University of Jayawardenepura. From during the university time, I also did my CIM, and I got into the field of marketing. Yeah, that's how the life goes. <laughs> so, were you a studious child? You know, were you the kind to were very were you very curious about everything that kind? Were you studious getting straight A's? Oh, uh, I was actually getting straight A's, uh, to be honest. But well, uh, I was curious and uh, throughout my childhood, I think it was a lot of trial and errors. Like, you know, until I get into my O levels, I didn't know what I would be doing for my A levels. I went for science class, I went for maths class because my parents and my teachers th- thought that I am good at maths um, and somebody thought that I'm good at science, but it didn't work for me. And then I did commerce uh, and in commerce after getting through to the university. Also, everybody was saying, OK, now if you are getting through to the uni, I mean, if you are going to Jayawardenepur, you have to do accounting. So I started doing chartered. I went to the first stage, second stage and then, you know, felt like it's, it's not the so, uh, yeah, that's how it worked uh, for me. And then I got through to, I mean, I, I, I got myself interested in marketing and then uh, I perceived that uh, for a long period of time. So that is why I said I've been a marketer throughout in my career also. Okay. okay. So that's what your childhood was, childhood was like and that's how you, that childhood paid uh, a big role. You know, it played a big role into you ending up where you are right now. Yeah, I hope so. So, when did you fall in love with marketing? You know, how how did that happen? Uh, yeah, ev- like everything, it was very late. You know, after a lot of trial and errors. Uh, as I told you, I, I, I wanted to go to the university. That was the only objective in my mind when I was doing my A-levels. 
and then i went to the university i thought okay now that i need to do accounting so i went to charter as i said uh, followed it for about 2 years in the university at that time i felt uh, like you know it's not my thing it's the inner feeling that you you get yeah right at and at that time luckily our system was at university that you get this 800 student from the count scheme and then they put them all together in one batch to teach you all disciplines of management you get a taste of hr you get a taste of finance you get a taste of accounting uh, business administration and then marketing too so that was the first time when i was about 23 years old i was learning proper marketing management and then i found okay this subject is different it talks about consumer behavior it talks about human psychology it talks about how you change consumers attitudes to get a favorable response to your uh, you know communication i felt okay that's that's something that i really interested in and then uh, channeled my uh, professional education also then you know shifting from charter to cim and then i start you know following on cim and marketing worked well for me so i liked it that is how i fell in love but but one thing for sure really i am really grateful that i i you know f- fell in love with marketing because right now when i think about and when i see all the other the guys who are working with me in the organization how much they do and how well they do in their respective decision i don't know what i would have been doing otherwise i you know <laughs> not selected marketing in my career so you you don't regret it at all you think it's a great no, no. thing that happened yeah yeah that's the best thing happened to me <laughs> so you uh, went down this path and fell in love with marketing after that your first job was oh my first job was at um, uh unilever sri lanka it was a uh, trade marketing assistant it was uh it was uh, it was my intern in the university you have to work about 6 months um during the university time so i got selected to the unilever uh, they are worked as an assistant uh, trade market marketing assistant my whole job was to uh, you know help that they had a great team of trade marketing uh that is the time where in 2006 the the modern trade was a big thing and you know everybody was excited about modern trade that is the supermarkets so lot of number crunching i was my primary uh responsibility was to convert those data into information meaningful information so that my team can uh, my bosses uh, can get more accurate decisions so i was basically it is a computer thing it's a excel thing i was uh, you know uh preparing reports daily on weekly basis is market wise region wise product wise so it was interesting that was my first job so in this uh, not in the job actually in your entire career you know from working what kind of mm. roles have you played you know were the what kind of roles what kind of jobs have you done <laughs> uh, you know for for good or bad i don't know that's yet to be decided i i have worked 17 years in my career uh, and i have been into seven different organizations but if you if i look back in the first six years out of that i have worked in five organizations mm. okay uh i probably i was just like you know finding my way out uh, what fits me the best and all uh so as a result i i have been in all types of you know jobs titles you may say in the marketing career ladder so to start with i was a assistant as i said assistant yeah. uh, trade uh, marketing guy and then i became a brand executive uh, at sri lanka insurance then i became uh, assistant brand manager for a very short period of time in fontera sri lanka then i was a category, uh, brand manager at asian airlines insurance then i was a brand and communication manager at uh, rich life dairies and then i moved to lion breweries as a uh, marketing manager and activation and then in the lion brewery i worked as uh, the category manager also and then i worked at silon hotel corporation there as a head of marketing and then became as uh, head of marketing and operations and then to barista as a general manager then to see 
So, mm. you know, top to bottom. I've been top everywhere. To <laughs> top to bottom everywhere. The bottom to so, top, I would say. The bottom to top. So, yeah. When did you end up in the restaurant industry? You know, you said you worked in barista. You're working in barista oh. now. But when did you cross yeah. that that gap? Okay. So that was in 2012 uh, when um, I joined Lion Brewery. It's, it's a very interesting to- story. It was only a lion could do kind of a, a thing. Where well, lion wanted uh, to, f- how do I say, forward integrate uh, the business, and they <clears throat> wanted to uh, run. pubs and restaurants uh i mean you know lion brewery is the the largest uh, beer manufacturer in sri lanka so they wanted to set the standards in selling also because they that that is another way that you can uh, you know increase the consumption where you forward integrate and you know get all these pubs to run so that you can elevate the industry standards of you know consuming a beverages alcohol beverages and in there we so i think you guys probably would remember i mean it's not your age though still uh, machang uh, restaurants there's a there's a chain of machang restaurant at that time i think when i left there there were about 35 machang restaurants and also pubs uh, brewery by you show by you uh, and uh, flow by you those are two completely different markets one is like for example machangos to rikilagaskada kurunagala pugoda kind of areas to capture the alcohol consumer completely different tg and then you have colombo 7 uh flow by your show by your market also so it's very premium so across the board from a very premium uh consumer to the local mass consumer we were selling and all the strategies are very different the positionings are very different hence all the the marketing uh, mix execution strategies but i was the guy who was like you know wearing that hat uh, one day and the, the other day the other hat so it was very interesting during that time i i used to uh, work with great personalities you know i i i still consider the best uh, boss of my life i met at that point uh, he was ex ceo of pizza hut and then i got great uh, through him also i got to know great uh, food and beverage uh, people in the industry uh, learned a lot about uh, food and beverage during that time and uh, worked with so much of uh, so many great uh, companies and some associations so that is when i you know actually shift my uh, you know directions towards food and beverage in 2012 now it's been 11 years 11 years yeah so how did you end up as the ceo of barista <laughs> you know barista sri lanka okay well uh, in 2018 um i was interviewed uh, for actually it's a funny story uh, the the vacancy was for ceo to be honest uh, and i was trying my luck you know sending my cv Uh, I was always like that. I I felt like I I need to send this. And at, I mean, that time I was 35, only about six years experience in the food and beverage. Uh, but I was not even interviewed in the first round. Uh, that I got to know later. And then some uh, one of the directors then he wanted to have not an interview also just to have a chat with me to see whether I am okay to put into. the board of directors interview so that chat went well and then i went into the directors for the final interview and i i remember like you know uh, the ones that they have finalized is you know great gentlemen like you know 15 years 20 years experience so that was one question we're asking um uh, well all the other gentlemen uh, had lot of experience but you have only 5 years experience and i was said like you now if that is the case i have to come after another 10 years time because then only i'll be like 45 so that i would be able to get uh, you know 15 years experience but i also said it could be like you know two years experience repeated 10 times that could be 20 years experience but you know it's obsolete at that point uh so that discussion went well but i mean fair by them also uh um, they decided okay we'll take you as the general manager for barista and then we will keep the ceo position open 
so if that if we see the potential uh, in you and then you you have the capacity to fill that then you will eventually move into the ceo of barista but and unfortunately you ended up like, filling that up oh uh, yeah up reaching that so. capacity re- reaching that Maybe. borderline border that they wanted to get and you fill the ceo position i having said that uh, 2018 if you remember was the last normal year of sri lanka after that all the chaos yeah. happened you know yeah. all the east attack and then the covid Downfall. two years wasted and then this recession and political instability i mean all lined up right and and i also believe somebody with this common sense would not even thought of applying for ceo in, in a coffee selling company <laughs> you know so that probably could be another reason also that i i was able to feel uh, feel that position however i need to tell you that uh, nathila now that uh, we talk to you know the age of your people mostly i i always wanted to be a ceo in my life like right? i always wanted to be a ceo before 40 uh and i always wanted to be a ceo in a leading industry industry company in an industry and then when even before i was actually uh being the general manager even when i worked as a head of operations and marketing i used to work like one i used to think like one i used to associate and i i always admired to be a one uh and then you become one you know that's law of attraction for you maybe and 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 if you think and if you act and if you if you associate and if you build network then it will happen to you i i don't want to just you know uh, be, be like you know eating the humble by saying nobody was there so that i became but i i strongly believe if you really want it you will have it strongly believe it you will have it absolutely nice way to put it from all your experience no so can any marketer you know climb up to the rank and become a ceo <sighs> tough questions oh well well i, I think i mean judging yes. by your experience if it's possible to <laughs> no no i think uh, in the years because i i think whatever i think every every ceo should be a marketer but i i know where where your question is coming from you you mean to ask me uh, somebody who practices the discipline of marketing like Uh, in yeah, the area yeah. of marketing like brand and this and executive become so, a like ceo and adapt to that personality uh, and and i yes then i believe uh, i believe somebody uh, i i prefer to have so much of marketing people be in the ceo seat but if you really look at uh, netila all the big brands that you see all the big ceos that you see irrespective of what discipline they came from they are good marketers you know the the, the job of a marketer is to that is how we were taught and i am reading uh, to understand and anticipate the customer needs and wants design a solution which creates more value than their competition at a profit in a socially responsible manner is in that the job of every ceo is in that what he should be you know he supposed to be doing so i think at the end of the day every ceo is uh, or whether they like it like to call them <laughs> that way every ceo marketer. has a marketer in them Yeah, I think yes. I think every CEO is a marketer, to be very honest. <laughs> so now that I know why you became, uh, how you ended up from going as a marketer to a to the CEO of a, a massive coffee, uh, coffee. Uh, how do I say it? Yeah, from going from a marketer to becoming the CEO of Barista Coffee, and and now that you answered one of the most important questions I had, can any marketer become a CEO? I'd like to know what you do as the CEO of. Barista, but I mean, you explain right now that every CEO uh, is sort of a marketer. But can you explain in more detail? What do you do? Okay, see, Nathila, um, at Barista, we have set a vision to ourselves. Our vision is to become the undisputed coffee leader in the industry and become the most preferred cafe chain in Sri Lanka, while contributing our best to our team, our guests, and to the community at large. So that is our vision. to become the undisputed leader become the most preferred cafe chain and do our best to our guests our team and and the society at large so my job is to make sure that the company gets there that the company gets the right strategic directions at right time to move or either we want to shape the industry also shape the consumer for us to you know technically get there and then to hire 
to retain and train the people uh, for the organization to make sure that the organization gets there. Because I am a firm believer organization, nothing but a set of people. So ultimately, if you really, really drill down what my job is, is to make sure the guys that who are with me, working with me, are safe and to make sure that they take the business to our vision. I mean, simply put, that's what I do. Sounds like a lot of work, no? Being a CEO. Ah, yeah. It's your choice, right? <laughs> it's your choice. So, can you tell me the story of Barista so far, you know, the journey? Okay, oh, I have time now. Yeah, we have, <laughs> okay, we have time. <laughs> yeah. Is it it's, that long? Oh, Locked well, it's now. a 20, 20 year story. Uh, so, Lion, uh, actually, Barista is initiated in 2000. So, we are already uh, 2001. I mean, we are already 20, 20 years old. Uh, and uh, for some reason, I, I got to be honest, like, I can only, uh, you know, be very right about uh, how. I mean, after I joined and what, what the things that changed. But for one thing, for sure, I liked about Barista was for 14 to 16 years, that's been not very dramatic, right? They've been doing one thing, right? They've been doing very honest coffee. They have not played that out. And also they had a lot of good employees, Baristas, or well-trained ones, right? But other than that, I need to admit the fact that there are so many other areas that I had to look into when I took over. It was about seven outlets that we had financial wise, also brand wise, also some other, you know, fundamental pillars were not very strong, other pillars, but our coffee and our baristas are very strong. So I have to give the credit to everybody who worked for barista for, for preserving the core for the business. What happened uh, in the next five years in 2018 where people get to know about barista is the interesting one that is the things that we change the direction of the business it's very i mean if i don't know whether you remember because you're still very young maybe your father maybe your your parents would know uh, coffee seen in sri lanka was considered very premium coffee is like some luxury uh, all this time, uh, like, you know, you find coffee shops in Colombo, you find coffee shops well lit, well furnished, and, you know, coffee is very expensive. I mean, if five years ago, it still, it was about 600, 700 rupees. And at that time, it was very expensive, that 600, 700 rupees, because inflation was not like, like this these days. So, uh, and I have no doubt, or I am not, nobody to blame, because all these small cafes are mostly single person owned, and they didn't have the intense or capacity to grow big. You know, they have one uh, their cafe, and they wanted to milk that. So the best strategy for them is to focus strategy where you create a niche and you promote a product, and then you get a big margin and you make good profit out of it. So that's the perfect strategy. But for a company like Barista, with the intention and the capacity to grow for 50, 60 outlet, and we were always planning to grow big, but it didn't happen during the last 16 months because we were playing in the wrong strategic group. Okay. We also wanted to follow those individual, those standalone cafes and making the market so premium. But having said that, you would also know in the last six to seven years, Sri Lanka was not growing. In fact, it was shrinking. Our GDP yeah. is shrinking. So there is no help for this uh, premium category to grow and making more bigger and you know creating more opportunities for coffee. So we decided, okay, look here, now that we are not going to do it, we're going to completely change the, the approach to coffee. When you do the approach change, it's like the coffee industry is very small at that point i know for a fact right and it's like you are trying to change the entire industry strategy by a one single company single-handedly so actually that is what we did we are now 27 outlets and i am very happy to say that we are serving 10 times more than the consumers we were say serving about five years ago that is because we changed the approach from focus strategy to cost leadership strategy 
yeah, you make coffee more affordable and accessible. These are the two words I say like a mantra every day. Our strategy is to make more coffee drinking people more often. That is making product affordable and making our coffee available every you know convenient locations they find. So that is the story. That is that is why you are invited me here. That is why I am talking like this to you. Thanks to our directors, the people who worked with me, people who believed in the whole cause. Uh, we were like say very brave to say, oh, oh yes, 16 years we followed this, but if that doesn't work, we get to have the guts to say it's wrong, we go back. And we did that. That's the story of Barista. Very, very shortly. Very shortly, because I'm sure there's a lot more to tell. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you so you basically changed the way an entire industry works and it was successful. Yeah, it has to be done, uh, Nethila. You can't you have to take that risk. Business. Otherwise, we, we are gone. Otherwise, the coffee would have been gone a little long ago. Uh, through with COVID, probably. Yeah. There's a comment actually here. So if you want to check it out, there's a question from the audience. So having a marketing background is an advantage to any CEO. Obviously, yes. Uh, I think... Uh, I. I I mean, my answers, I mean, when, when I say things here, it's are not really the right answers. They are my opinions. You know, I have to stand for it. Uh, I, I really believe that marketing background is very important uh, for, for, for a CEO. As I said, I mean, marketeer's job is to understand and anticipate customer needs and wants and create better solution, better than competition selling at a profit in a socially responsible manner. Listen, that sound like a CEO's thinking. You know, it's, it's, it's what a CEO should also do. And when I look back and read all the biographies of anybody, uh, all the big brands like, you know, uh, like uh, Richard Branson to Nike CEO founder to Starbucks CEO founder to Apple CEO founder. I, f I read marketing. I don't read anything <laughs> in their books. So, I really believe because uh, this one thing that I really need to bring it out here, which I always stand very strongly on, on that opinion. Marketing, most of the time, uh, Nethila and uh, even Amita, people think it's um, it's common sense. It is absolutely not common sense because in Sri Lanka, I have seen that like, you know, people say it's not rocket science. Obviously, it's not rocket science, but it is a science. I firmly believe marketing is a science. There are a lot of scholars working on it. There are a lot of research being done. There's, it's a huge subject. But Sri Lanka has this misconception of if you can speak English, you are a marketer. Haven't you, you know, I mean, you we always, you know, uh, confuse that, you know, you being, you are you're, you're very fluent, you can be a marketer. You are very good at presentation, you can be a marketer. No, marketing is to me science as chemistry. When you put sodium and when you put um, something that you get something out, yeah, you get you your know, you, you get your results. The same thing like that. Same thing. Same thing like when you build a, a, a good brand identity and then you uh, you know top it up with brand awareness, uh, pursued brand quality, uh, good brand associations and brand loyalty. You get a great brand. It's just science as that. You know when you do the right research, understand your right TG segments them. Uh, target them properly and then you position your brand you find out your uh, point of differences you find out your point of parities and then you execute that in marketing mix strategies results will come just like science right so i'm trying to say you have to learn it and and that learning will give you results it's not then common sense you know it's not magic even so most of the time people say it work like magic no no theories work it's just theory that you don't know. You can't call them magic. Okay. Few more questions also, I think. If you can answer this. Well, well, well that's a tough question, you know. I think uh, well, more I'll read about leadership, uh, more it's get complicated. Uh, I, I'm I'm wrong if I put it that way. Maybe it's, it's a very complex subject. Uh, we have so many theories for leadership. We have great man theory, trade theory, behavioral theory, situational theory, transformational theory. And if anything doesn't work, you have contingency theory also for, for, for leadership. Now, what does that mean? I, I have heard something. You really don't know anything if you can't explain it very simply to a child. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just having so many theories on leadership, you know, you know, just convince me that it's a very complex subject. That is why there's so much of theories to explain the same thing. And that is the most fundamental requirement because it's the way of managing people. You have full disciplines to manage HR, uh, uh, you know, production. You have full discipline to manage uh, uh, time, other resources. But this is the only way that you manage people. It's leadership. And it is very, very, very difficult. But what I have convinced in my life or what I have experienced in my life is leadership never comes to you with a position as simple as possible. It's you being, you know, a head of department, you don't, you are not a leader. You being the general manager, you are not a leader. You being the CEO of this company, I'm not the leader. Leadership doesn't come with authority. Those are authority. Like when you're given a position, you have authority. You can ask people to get work done. But leader, only how it happens is if you have followers, if you have people who trust you, who believes you, who would tell, okay, I'll give my 120%. I believe in your vision. Let's go work it's this out then only you become a leader you know in most of the cases people misunderstand this concept like you know you can you know you automatically become a leader when you are big and when you have 15 subordinates uh, who who are reporting to you you never become a leader i have seen great leaders who are working at the very very functional level than all the you know big department heads in a big conglomerations also because people rally around you. If you are a leader, people rally around you. That That's a different concept altogether. You know, you are not like when you are the CEO, when I see you, I am not in charge. No, I'm not in charge. I am responsible for who are in my charge. Right? As I told you earlier, like my our vision, I want to make sure I want to look after the people who are working for the for the dream or working for the vision. So leader, when you are a leader, you should be able to sacrifice the best out of you to make to make sure that everybody around you, everybody who follows you are safe. You know, in the darkest time, even the very difficult times, you have to, you know, show back and see like, you know, ask guys, are you okay? Can we do this? So that's the different thing. So actually not in a good position to answer this question, because I am also reading, I think there's a lot to be learned on leadership. But I think you, uh, I think the basic concept of what a leader is, is somebody who leads people towards success or something to that effect, right? Somebody who betters yeah. the lives of others around them who are following them. That's that's a simple way to define a leader, I guess. So yeah, what you yeah, said yeah. was correct. But between saying and doing, there's a long distance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's another one here from uh, how do you handle work-life balance? Okay, so this question, I'm also saying opinion. This is not answers. This is how I look at things. Rather, how people look at things are very different to someone else. So this is only my opinion. In my opinion... Sure that uh, is why they're asking. They want to get the opinion of the CEO of Barista. That's what they want. Maybe, but it couldn't be the right answer also. They should know that. My, my answer would be... Uh, well, I don't believe in that. Uh, I don't think there's a thing called work-life balance. I believe there's a thing called work-life consequences. You know, you have consequences. You know, what what, 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 what you focus, you will have results on that. What you focus, you will have results on the other side. You know, if you focus on work, work you grow on, on that line. If you focus on, you know, life, that, that grows, uh, you know, it's 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 it's, it's all about your value system to be honest right Uh, my opinion and my experience i have been i have not been rich i don't say i've been poor but i know how difficult situations are i i know how important uh, a career for a person like us actually we were not capital rich and every i as i told you like the my capital was the knowledge so we were applying knowledge and every time I wake up, I feel like I have to do something. And for, for have to tell you, like for the last five years, I've not been, been feeling like I'm working because it was done with a lot of passion, even though there are a lot of, you know, difficulties and challenges. So I feel, okay, I'm contributing. As I told you, it's all almost about value. I have been, I have been 
I have I have been in a situation where I could not make the the best choices because of maybe because of the price matter, because of the value matter. But uh, when you work and when you get the rewards, you feel like okay, you are in control sometimes. So I feel I I have a safety feeling there. But things may change, right? When 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 you know things grow and then you come to a situation like you know everything is sorted now that I want to. Uh, you know, be with my child's birthday from 12 noon to next day, the whole day and to take, uh, you know, all throughout. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, that's that's a personal choice, as I said. But I don't even believe uh, the people like Elon Musk, Steve Jobs, um, even uh, uh, Bill Gates, uh, Howards for Starbucks. Uh, I read, read them. I, it, it doesn't feel like that. Really, there's something like that. You know, they really work their butt out for sure. <laughs> yeah, I've also I love reading about them. You know, and their journeys. Yeah, we have a lot of questions from the audience. Oh, what is the turning point in the business? <clears throat> As I told you, the, the the U-turn that we took, the U-turn that we took, we wanted to generalize coffee where we wanted to actually have uh, a low price entry point to, to the consumer. I mean, if you really see, we went through a 70 to 80 percent inflation during the last year. And to tell you the truth, I am now buying a one liter of milk four times the prices, three times the price that I used to buy. I'm buying coffee two times the price that I used to buy. But if you go to Barista, you would still see the prices how we test it, we have not. Because I believe if you want to grow a category, you need to have a free and easy access point to the category. People do not like to experiment something by spending a lot of money. So your coffee first experiences should not be very expensive one. And especially a country like Sri Lanka, because their discretionary incomes are very, very small. So people don't want to risk what they have. But if you see, if, if you have not tasted coffee, we have an option for you, very good coffee, quality coffee for 380. Still, you have to believe, right? And that is how we got slowly people into the habits of drinking more coffee. And coffee has this wonderful thing because it, you know, it, it gets you, uh, you know, it gets into your system and, you know, it makes you need a coffee, you know, after a couple of days. And my job is to get you to drink four coffees or five coffees in two weeks time. And then the coffee would do, do the rest. So for me to do that, we need to have a easy access point to the category. And then you can have like your specialty coffee sell at 2000 rupee, don't have a problem, but at least have something, somebody to step in as a stepping stone and, you know, grow in the ladder of coffee. That is what we did. We reduce. I mean, for that, there's a lot of work, right? You have to work on your, uh, you know, food cost. You have to work on your overheads. You have to work on the designs of your outlets. You have to work on the methods and, you know, the strategies that you sell coffee. There are a lot of work there. Yes. There's more. What would you advise, what? advise me to a person who's trying to get into the marketing industry? Or would you advise a person who's trying to get in? I, I think get your basics right absolutely learn 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 there are a lot of theories you need to learn i have this conversation going with my university in itself uh, i have this conversation with uh, every time that i go to a you know even for a guest lecture in the universities in sri lanka local universities also they are thinking okay now you are you are here but the, the world world is working out there you know you have to go to second year you have to go and get the industry experiences and probably will put, put to somebody who has come on the normal general scheme of marketing and who are trying to do the trial and error method things without knowing the theories. But I feel if you are a if you are somebody who's getting into the industry, you have to work yourself out with your theories, with your proper education, read a lot of books, do some, you know, proper, do the justice to that. And then you go and implement it. They would say, wow, that's magic working. No, it's theory working because you've learned it. Otherwise, what happened, you get into because you are brain enough, you, you decided to do, a, you know, um, a marketing degree and and in that marketing degree, they push you to go and, you know, get, get that work experience with somebody who's doing trial and error and who's good at English and who's good, doing good presentation. And then you learn marketing. Oh, this is how marketing is done. No. 
So I think I'm. I mean, to be honest, I always feel I am obsolete every single day. I feel I have to learn a lot. Uh, there's something new has come. You have to read the new lectures. You have to read the new lectures of Kotler. You have to read the new books of Akers. You need to read the new box, books of Steve's. That's how you learn. You got to be a very strong, basic understanding about your subject. I mean, you don't ask this question from an accountant, right? They got to know their theories. Well. They can't be creative in their financial accounting. No, then they'll be ended up in jail. But we say it's creative. It's everybody's work. It's common sense. I mean, if you do some marketing work, everybody will give you comments. But you get the P and L. You okay? We accept it. So I want I want all the marketing students who are studying to be very thorough with your theories and go and show the magic in 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 the work. Okay. So about uh, uh, Barista again. So was it challenging to grow? You know, a coffee brand like that in a tea centric market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's challenging. I mean, I I don't even like to compare tea tea to you know coffee because tea is so into us, right? And uh, right now I'm drinking, <laughs> okay? <laughs> because it's it's in our blood, you know. It's in our blood. It's 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 us, you know. It's, it's Sri Lanka, uh, and uh, I'll tell you how it happened because tea is growing in Sri Lanka in big time. The whole industry was built here. or infrastructure was built here go back to the thing that i told you where is the entry point anybody can afford tea tea is accessible everywhere right so every household is a household product it's a functional product we call it like you it has become a functional product you can't open your day you can you know start and you know wake up your day without tea so that functional we are and we drink tea for no reason I mean, there's a feeling like I need a tea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's that in my blood, right? So comparing tea nation, converting those are like little, little big, big words. But what what I'm trying to do once again, you know, get at least a five percent share. That'll be great if if we can do that. I mean, if you want to do that, you need to go to take this co- coffee thing out of Colombo. Generalize it. Go to Kurunagala. Go to Gol. Go to Mathura. Go to Anuradha Pura. Go to Kadavata. Go to Boralaska Moor. Go to Kiribati Goda. You you have to you know get consumers there. Hmm. So what kind of plans do you have for Barista? You know the future plans that you are able to release. Uh, let us know. You know yeah. it's fine, right? Well, we have great plans for Barista. You know, as I mean, I am always you know directing my 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 ambitious to towards the vision you know that that vision is very great and we have everybody in our organization is very very understand very very clear about what what we are talking there we wanted to be said you know the undisputed leader in the market when you say undisputed leader then there's no question about it you know it's just like when you talk about coffee you have to talk about barista kind of thing It, it is not about having the largest number of cafes or having the largest sales or having the largest uh, cup of coffee sold. No, it's about who sets the standards for the industry, who 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 decides the direction of the industry, who brings the technology, the new technology to the industry, who actually decides things in the industry, the controlling power. That is what I'm trying to talk about. So that for that we have a long way. We need to work on our lot of things. We want to work with our infrastructure. We want to work with our outlet, you know, network. We want to work with our employees a lot. We want to talk work with our supply chain management. We want to talk about our IT and infrastructure. We have to talk about our inbound logistic. We have to talk about our outbound logistic. I'm talking about the whole value chain, right? So that whole value chain needs a lot of strategic thinking. A lot of expansion and and lot of a uh, lot of works to be done. But having said everything about that, what I really want to do is to be very close to the consumers who are not coffee drinkers right now. Because as I told you, if I want to be big, I really want to get uh, barista needs to serve a lot of customers, right? Uh, and for that, 
my basic focus is to understand why a lot of customers are not coming into a cafe and drinking a coffee. So there has to be a lot of learning research to be done to understand why that reason. Is that the price? Is that that they don't like the feeling? Or is this that something wrong with the coffee itself? Somebody says coffee is not you know tasty. Maybe coffee is sour or bitter. A lot of issues, right? So we want to work on that aspect. We need to understand our customer, what they want, how they drink coffee, with whom they drink coffee, when they drink coffee, all that of information. And then to design a product that they can feel like it's, it's more close to me so that I can become a coffee. So my, my dream is like everybody around Colombo, everybody in Anuradhapur, everybody in Mathur, everybody in Trinko, everybody in Halavata just gets around, sit uh, in a barista, in a nice coffee location, talking to their friends, having a coffee and absolutely you know, improve the standards of Sri Lanka, the life, lifestyles of Sri Lanka, I would say, in, in the large picture. Because Barista, I want to portray as a very optimist brand who never gave up, who's challenging the status quo, who is young and who represents Sri Lankan resilience. Mm. Th- that's, the, that's the whole thing, like, you know, it, it's, it's a broader thing that, that I'm talking about. Okay. So... I have a very important question now because mm-hmm. it's something I really want to know from you. What is your advice for the younger generation, for especially for kids like me, you know, who are interested in these kind of topics? Well, it's 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 it's, it's how do I say? Uh, I I am once again saying these are my personal uh, advices which I give to my kid. He is twelve years old, just like probably you. You are fourteen, I guess. 14. Yeah. Yeah. So he's 12. I, I tell him three things in life. Uh, there are so many ways that you can be successful, right? There's no this way, this path, uh, this far, hard and fast rule. But uh, what I feel now that I'm 41, I have been through uh, different stages of life, worked in some other organizations, worked in difficult times. So I, I tell him mostly the first thing is your education. Right. I've told them uh, in our, our house, my wife, myself and kid, I say we have very clear roles, uh, job roles, right? I said, this is what I do, right? And this is what your mom does. And your whole purpose of here, you have to do, don't have to worry about the financials. You don't have to worry about the uh, political situation of the country. You don't have to worry about who's financing what to, to I mean, you're free. So your basic job role is to get a good education. So you can't fail in that. You know, that education, I don't mean like, you know, you want to be the number one in the class, never. But be a very balanced person who does your have education. Have a general understanding. Absolute. I mean, you have your feet grounded. Understand what is happening. Be a social work person, social creature. You know, get along with people well, do some sports, understand what education means because education gives you rational thinking. Education will save at least a safety net, a work as a safety net for you, which I think is very important to everybody, especially when you're li- living in a country like Sri Lanka. And I know in education, he'll be a disciplined person. He'll take rational decisions. He'll be an analytical person. So that, that is what I want. So I my advice to anybody, okay, you can be an entrepreneur, you can be somebody else, you can be a YouTuber, but whatever the thing that you select, be good at it. Be knowledgeable about it. I'm not talking about two degrees and one master's. I'm talking about whatever you do, be knowledgeable, read, and don't keep rooms for some, I mean, if you, I mean, you are a human, you have a brain, and it's so difficult to become, I mean, I when I see the, Probably mere probability. There are so many ants out there, so many birds out there, so many worms out there. But you you became a human, right? And you can read, you can write, you can walk, you have limbs, you can run. I mean, live up to your potential. Don't 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 be ashamed. Right? So first thing, education. That's number one for me. Second thing, I tell him, whatever you do, do with passion. You need to be passionate about something, right? So 
I have to give him enough chances to find his passion. You see, in Sri Lanka, just like our cricket team, you see, you throw a ball, you have a stick in your hand, you can hit. I can hit. I've been hitting for so long, playing cricket in school. And you, I think you can also. I think 70-80% of the Sri Lankan guys can. Yeah, yeah, I have played a lot. <laughs> yeah, hit a ball with, with, with a stick. But think about Virat Kohli. When he was 23, he started. 21, he started to play. I think 20, when he was 20, he started to play for Indian cricket. What he was doing? He's just hitting a ball with a stick. But what does he do differently? He loves he it. That. Absolutely. You see the passion when he plays, you know. After so many years, you have, he has gone everything that a cricketer can get in the world. Because he's the best celebrity in India. And he has accumulated a worth of 500 million US dollars. Still 32. I don't know where he will be ending up, ended up his career. But still, the same passion. Even to get the 11th man out, see, look at his passion. So do anything that you do with passion. It can be anything. It can be, can be a chef. It can be, uh, you know, YouTube. It can be an entrepreneur. It can be somebody who's, you know, doing anything like cricket or your sport. Do that with passion. If you don't have passion, you can't do anything. Thirdly, hard work, hard work, hard work. I have told him it is about hard work. I mean, I the best religion that I believe actually is hard work. Because every time I do, I got results. Every time I don't, I got negative results. So that is the most proven thing. I mean, religion, you, you believe because something happened, like, you know, you believe something. So the best thing to believe is work, hard working. I've, I have seen, now that I'm 41, I have seen the very best talent in the universities. I have seen the guys who are working there so hard in their career. And I have seen 99%, uh, 95 out of 100 times, the guy who works really hard wins or a talent who doesn't work hard. It, it is a fact, to be very honest. So those are the three things that I say to him. Your education, do anything that you get yourself educated with passion and do hard work. And I don't see with these three combination, education, hard work and passion, a person who has failed, which is the most safest thing to me. You are educated, you are passionate and you are working hard. That's the best. I, that's that's my advice to my son and I and that applies to everybody. Thank you very much. But before we end this off, I have one last question. Now, mm -hmm. you gave that to the kids, you know, for my, for me and for other kids my age. But what advice do you have for parents, the people who will be watching over these kids and may, and ensuring mm -hmm. what they will do? You yourself being a parent as well. Yeah, that, can, that has to be the reflection of what I have advised you, you know, Nathila. Like, you know, education. So, you got to push your pay guys for education. I'm not saying once again, it's about degrees, it's about being number one in the class. It's about, you know, doing so many things. Okay, you do Western music, you do football, you do swimming, and, and you go for singing, you go for ballet, and then uh, you for gymnastic, and then get, um, you know, grade 95 grade for chemistry. No. I say some, I, I think some something that you feel like, right, is happening to this guy, gets him disciplined, gets him a rational thinker, gets, gets him working hard on something, support him and, and tell him, I mean, I, I say to my, 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 my son all the time, your primary objective you, of existence, frankly, these days is get your education straight. That is why, that, that's the whole purpose you, you need to be. Right. So help them in their education as much as possible. It's not just spending money, just spending some time with them, understand what they like, understand what they don't like. And secondly, let them find their passion. You know, in my house, I think all types of balls are here. From tennis balls to basketballs to footballs to everything. The only ball, ball I mean, golf ball is what is missing right now. And this is the time that they are like, you know, researching what really, you know, what is my passion. So for that, they need to like, you know, he was 
sometime he want to do i want to be the best chef in sri lanka then he was like watching football and said why not i become like ronaldo uh, and he was you know bought for some 300 millions so i i i want to be a football player or things like that you know but let them little have little space to understand what they really passionate about because i can relate that to myself i was 23 when i found my passion so you know it can happen at any time some i mean you are very lucky if you find that i lucky. got lucky i found it at 10 yeah. years old <laughs> yeah so at, at early stage of life so yeah so that's secondly and thirdly the work hard i mean tell them that things are not free you know you being a child and i am a parent so i doesn't come to you like just no nah, it's nothing like free lunch you know i know i i i have to we have to look after them but always if you reward them reward that uh, connect that to effort that is how i mean this is the way i i i do i'm again saying there are a lot of ways to skin a cat but you know when i'm skinning my cat at home that's how i say like you know your reward comes with this effort for so this effort this re- re- reward for this effort it is proportionate all the time you know then i uh, and he understand you have to do something to get something so that you prepare him for all s- sort of you know situations the seasons to be very honest because i, I in my life i've gone from bad so i'm going winter to summer right maybe i don't know still <clears throat> but you uh, know and when you have your child all summer and when he gets his winter you are not even there when you're old or when you're gone then that's a problem so i i always tell him things are difficult things you have to earn things are connected to your performance i like that way mm. it's not the right way but it's, it's working i think with him so that is my piece of advice to parents We have one more que- uh, question from the audience. How to hold on to hard work when nothing seems to be working? Work hard. Work harder. You work have harder. to work harder. I mean you are, you are talking about smart work versus hard work. I know how it's been like, you know, manipulated. But for me, I mean you're 23 or when you're 20s when you're in your early stage of career, how do you even know what is hard work, what is smart work, right? So why you take a chance? I can always say okay look back and see whether you are in the right track of working hard that is why maybe you think your working hard is not working because you are in the wrong track so there's a saying there's no point of running when you are in the wrong road because you will be going <laughs> to the wrong direction further so if your hard work is not working maybe you don't have your heart in it i don't know because heart doesn't go because you don't have passion maybe you are in the wrong 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 position altogether you know i work so hard i can tell you in, in my charter and but it never happened it, it never happened i i never liked it i know i worked hard but it just really didn't you know click on to me but when i came to marketing and it, i mean in some offices in, in my jobs also i worked so hard in some of the jobs but i've never recognized I I was never felt happy that I contributed so I left those locations and uh, right now I'm at Brista I'm from 2018 toughest life for a marketer in his entire life of human being was seen at Brista the covid was so so bad all the outlets was closed we didn't know what to do Uh, we couldn't get out of the organize uh, of our house customers are locked inside our house you can't travel right so that was the doom doom days uh, the worst even not in a case study i've learned a situation like that but there was intention there was passion there was a vision that at that time very small organization six seven outlets but we worked and hard work to talk about 72 days i have the calendar with me right now even i kept it for my son i have gone to work without a single daily because my vehicle was the only permitted vehicle to deliver uh, food and people so every time i go i have to take five people in my vehicle to work so if i don't go there's no way of people going during the darkest time of covid i'm talking about mm. so i kept working hard because i can tell you one thing you know if you are in the hell already there's no point of stopping there 
just move forward if you can't run you walk if you can't walk you crawl but make sure that you are working f- moving forward that's that's what you want to do to the right direction mm. yeah thank you very much so that's i think that's all of it lovely so, thank you very much for taking your time to uh, come here and my pleasure my pleasure like nas with your many years of work experience because i also love barista and i i never knew the story of it so i got a first hand experience from the ceo himself <laughs> so thank you very much and and i i need to tell you you are doing a great job right seriously i was telling i, I think my son is also watching he was not here at home he went to uh, his archie's place in ambalagwad uh, but he said he'll connect uh, and i was telling look, look this aya is 14 years old and he's uh, his questions the, uh, the 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 way that you talk the 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 way you present and the knowledge that you have about even you know constructing these questions the tough questions to be very honest right uh, so good and i i want this positive message to be you know absorbed and digest to all the kids in sri lanka because tell you the truth net this is you are our last lifeline i tell the that this to my son also sri lanka's last lifeline is your generation our generations our elder generation they have not done a good job including myself and i i i feel guilty about it we we never did right like you know i mean if we have done right how can this country be bankrupt this beautiful country this resourceful country how can this be bankrupted if we have done our part that includes selecting right leaders to run this company run this i'm um, run this country you know so i think guys like you uh and maybe my son or your your people who are listening to you it's i have to, it is very unfair to be very honest uh, to to you know, put the whole burden on you and say look yeah. here like you are the last lifeline now sri lanka is in your hand bad but we will try i mean, i have decided myself like you know i am a complete product of free education nothing else. it's just education 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 only it's thanks to the free education of sri lanka we are here and i know a lot of people like me probably listening to me right now in the in my my university students a uh, university friends they are all around the world doing great job and i think we have a great responsibility to to mold you at least to share our wrong experiences with you guys honestly to tell this is where i have gone wrong kids you will not go in this road and i think that is uh, the ultimate responsibility of our generation looking after your generation because you are the saviors we have to protect you groom you educate you feed you with the right positive attitudes to go and get this country back in the track it doesn't seem like you know our generation is not going to do it for sure <laughs> but i i hope you do thank you thank you very much so audience thank you very much for tuning in and listening to this i hope you also learned a lot from listening to our knowledge you had a lot of knowledge to give sir thank you very much i learned a lot knowledge is to be to, to be there to be shared seriously there's no point of keeping it. it's just like fire you know you give more Spreads. both yeah both people get it bigger it's just like fire so uh, thank you very much and uh, thank yeah thank you very much sir thank you for the audience okay, as well okay signing off thanks bye signing off thanks